Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. We're at the park with the Femi A3 drone. Now this is the super budget. It's been out for a little while, but I just got my hands on one and I just kind of want to give my take on how this thing is uh, performing. And so we're going to do a full on flight test with the A3 today. I'm going to have the FPV on here recorded since it has a built in DVR in here. I'm also going to have my hat cam footage and the 1080 max 30 frames per second that you can record on the camera. I'll have all that up for you and we're going to put it through as many paces as we can with one battery. So let's get started with the Femi A3. Let's fly. I'm just going to go through kind of a um, little setup and calibration just so you have like a real time you know some information on how long it actually takes to set up so want to make sure we put a micro SD card in here that's able to do 1080 at 30 frames per second so I just have a 16 gig card in there and then we'll go ahead and push in the battery and all we need to do is put on the propellers really simple just push down and lock little mechanism there grab another one that has the red on top and push this one on the arm that has the red make sure it pushes down twists and pops up and locks so we're going to do that on all four of these that's really all there is to it. it took about 20 seconds to do all the propellers so they don't collapse but not bad so push up the uh, antennas like this make sure our sticks are all screwed on correctly make sure this is in gps mode here and if you do want to have that recording capability to record the screen in here it's pretty cool it also has like gp uh, gps coordinates and everything if you do lose it you can reference it so it has a DVR, you need to put on a micro SD card in here. So I just have a little 16 gig in here as well. So we can record uh, that also. Just press and hold the controller, holding down until that beeps. And then we're ready to actually turn on the drone. So we'll just, the drone, it seems like you gotta press, press and hold this power button on the bottom until you hear that kind of multi-tone boot up. And then real quick, we'll just look at the gimbal and camera here. And that's it. You saw how fast that initiated. We immediately have video since this is using an analog FPV. Um, it's really quick to start up. So it gives us a little pre-flight checklist. I just have everything in auto on the camera. System date. Press any key to exit. So I'm just pushing in anything. There we go. It's pretty much ready to go. If you're ever like in a new area, like even away from your house, maybe if you're in a park, it's really good to do another calibration. So with this little joystick here, we're going to press to the left. We're going to go down. You can also use this roller to go down in this menu. It's kind of cool. And we're going to go into calibration and then press in here. And the main thing we want to do is a compass calibration. You can do everything else like gimbal, horizontal, IMU calibration in your house on perfectly level surfaces. But I want to do a compass cal here in the park. So keep away from metal objects or strong magnetic fields. Press OK to calibrate. So we're going to press OK. And here's what it's telling us. It's telling us to rotate like so. So I'm rotating it horizontally in a counterclockwise position here. Kind of hard to see the screen in the glare. And then it's saying um, put it face up and then do it counterclockwise again. So I'm doing this, I'm just trying to keep it away from my hat cam because that's putting off some interference. And I'm just keep, there we go. I just kept doing it until it was totally complete. So it's saying calibration success, press any key to exit. So I'm gonna press that guy again. I guess it keeps beeping at you. So we're calibrated for the park guys. We're good to go. And what we need to do is just basically launch this thing. I have 17 satellites. So before you launch this, if you want to have the DVR recording, it's really important that you press in this button here. So I'm going to press in the button here, the main stick. And what you'll see is this little red kind of video icon blinking. And that means it's recording your FPV screen with the coordinates. And also we want to start our recording our video. So I'm going to hold in this left trigger until we hear a long beep. And then we should see, yeah, so our video is now recording on the screen, ticking away. Cool thing about this is it has these little notches when you pull down and in. So it knows, it lets you know that you're exactly in the right spot. And as soon as you arm it, it tries to log a, um, a GPS home point. So it just logged a GPS home point. Kind of interesting, it's popping in and out between 12 and 18 satellites. 
which is a little bit concerning, but it might be just the time of day it is, you know, around, oh, and the propeller's dis disarmed. It is around five o'clock p.m. and it's pretty windy, so we'll see how this does in the wind. So the propellers do disarm if you don't launch right away, so that's a good safety feature. I always like to check those little things. Home point taken again. So we'll just push up very gently. As you can see, it launched just perfectly. Really nice and easy. And keep in mind, there is some wind here, okay? So the wind is about, I wanna say, in this area, not too bad, maybe five to 10, but when we get up above these trees here, it's gonna be really windy. So we'll be checking that. So we'll just do our quick little walk around. All I did was launch straight up so far. And we're just gonna see how stable it is, kind of fighting some of this wind like I usually do. We'll check out the camera kind of close up. You can see how it is kind of going up and down because there are no bottom or forward or any kind of sensors on this aside from the basics like barometer and all that stuff. So you can see how it is wandering a few feet in the wind up and down. It wants to go up more than down. There we go, bring it down a little bit. So I'm surprised at actually how well this thing flies. It's really quiet too. Um, it's even quieter than like a Mavic Pro. And it may be even quieter than like the Hubson H501S. But we should have around 20 minutes of flight time. We'll see, you can see the lights flashing on the back and they're solid in the front, indicating it's in GPS mode. So there's the fluctuation you can expect in the wind. But remember guys, this is two to $300 drone. So very cheap yet, we're just trying to see the effectiveness of it, if it's worth it. So let's do some, uh, just some basic flight functions. We'll go ahead and we'll push straight up. You can see how that wind is kind of blowing it up and down. So we'll do full pitch or full throttle up and we'll see how fast we're going. Right now, full up. We're also taking a look at that video. I have it recording, I'll have it up. Actually, did the recording stop? Wow. Guess what guys, maybe I have to start recording again. Oh, you know why? Because I landed. Sorry about that. So I guess I'll have the FPV up until I just turned it on. So full throttle up. Vertical speed, guys, guess what? We're at seven miles per hour. And that's how the, the video looks fighting about 10 to 15 up there. We'll just do one quick rotation really slowly. And have a look at the horizon and everything as I'm doing this. We'll do a little bit more stuff once I come down. But this, this is the 1080 video. This is its maximum. Everything's max setting at 1080, 30 frames per second in the very fine detail. Um, so, so far so good. Even the 5.8 gigahertz FPV is doing very, very well. We'll get back to like the West Maui Mountains here. Now we'll do a full throttle down and we'll see how fast it's coming down and how the shake is in the video. Maybe about 4.5 miles per hour. So slower coming down. And we are just in regular GPS mode. This does have a sport mode, keep in mind. And letting off now. Wow, did you see that? So it's really good. I mean, a lot of drones just have trouble like overshooting when you let off, but this one's really good, although it does wander once it's kind of let off. <clears throat> but that's, you know, from my experience, it's kind of normal. Whoa, did you see that gust? <laughs> that wasn't good. So be careful in gusts of wind, guys. Keep it higher up, because it will push it down. You see that? Gust coming from this direction. Now it's going all over because it's such a light drone. But once it kind of, um, once the wind dies down, it does keep locked pretty good. Anyway, GPS mode, I think it's just all default at 18 meters per second maximum speed. So let's do some speed runs. Before we do that, here's the camera going up and down. That's full gimbal down, full gimbal up until it stops kind of slows down gradually as it goes right up. So let's do some speed runs right about eye level. Full pitch forward. I wanna stop before we hit that fence or anything. And I'm just gonna go back, all the way back. Let's see how it maintains its altitude. And just let off. That's actually pretty good, man. 
for how cheap this drone is. That was really good. Let's see how fast we get going. Full stick forward again. That was like 22 miles per hour just in that short run. Letting off now. So it's going to need about 10 to 15 feet to stop at just about full GPS speed. Let's go forward and do some turning like I usually try to do just to see what we can expect for it to like drop and stuff. So full forward and full turn. That's actually really good. Remember the Xeno like crashed into the ground when I did that. So I'm just full stick forward and doing full turns. Also take a look at the video, right? See how it is keeping itself level. So this one's doing very good, even in about five to 10 wind down here. Letting off right now, right over me, about 20 feet. And actually I'll have had the um, FPV up on the screen, guys, so you can actually see all the speeds and everything in that 5.8 recorded video. Cool, so that's basic flight. Um, battery power still looks good, 11.5 volts. We may not have time on this, I only have one battery, so we may not have time to do all these special functions, but at least we'll do the basic flight functions. First thing I wanna do is see how fast it'll go that way. So let's just get it up in GPS, and so we're not limited to the park, and I'm gonna go full stick forward. And we're going 18, we're going kind of going into the wind. So into the wind, we're maxing at about 20-ish. Okay, don't want to go too close to those houses, so I'll come back. I did see the propellers kick into the view a little bit, but you can always like rotate your gimbal down like this a little bit, like that. Get those propellers out of there, if you wanted to, I guess. And that horizon, guys, keep in mind, that's the side of the mountain. Okay. I don't even know where I went. <laughs> I think I overshot myself. Let's get back here. Okay, yeah, just overshot it a little bit. We'll go ahead and come down. Looks like maybe it made another um, video file. There it is. It's very quiet. This drone's really quiet and light and it seems pretty nimble. You hear that? One of the quietest I've ever tested. Even quieter it seems than the Nafi, tell you the truth. What was that? Whoops. Um, disconnected, returning home. Wow, that was interesting. What the heck happened there? Now it's trying to return to home. Well, let's see what it thinks is the accuracy. And then I'll stop it. I'll go ahead and push back up. And is it still going to try to return to home? There we go. Exited smart flight. Okay, so I guess at some point during that flight, it tried to return to home. Let's get this gimbal back up. And it seemed like it was going to land just a few feet away, so that's actually not bad at all. So let's go into sport mode guys, flipping this yellow or orange switch to the left. And up here goes from GPS to sport mode on the controller. Still recording, FPV still recording, good. So we'll do sport now at kind of a eye level and then we'll start doing it a little higher, see the maximum. So I'd assume in sport, it may hit the ground. Unreal, look at this. It's not phasing it at all. You'll see the, how the video looks. Whew. But it's, it, if anything, it's going up a little to be safe. Hitting some wind gusts. Let's bring it down. I'm gonna bring it down a little. Wow. Letting off. And that thing is solid in sport. Full stick forward. Whew. Okay flies very stable and very well in sport. Let's see how fast we can get going if we go that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, and it brings the, uh, seems like it bring the gimbal down so you don't see the propellers, that's cool. I just had to push my gimbal back up. Full stick forward. Let's see how fast we can start going in sport, guys. 
Ooh, there is some wind up there. 25, 27, 28. It looks like it's gonna go almost 30 going into the wind. So looks like you're gonna get maybe 30 to 35 since it is about 15 to 20 up there. Whew. That's how fast it was coming. I didn't even look. But that's how fast it was coming back home. Let's see how fast it is coming down in sport. Six, just about seven. So going faster, probably at the expense of the camera. Letting off now. Nice. I really love it when quads just stop when you let off the controls. So it's smooth, yet not too wishy-washy. And it's still very, very precise as far as the lag time on the controls responds very, very well. It's just light, so that wind is gonna make it kind of flutter. But that camera is looking stable, even in the flutter. Remember, I'll have that up on the screen. And we're also gonna be kind of looking at the horizon as I spin it. And it looks good to me. Cool. So we'll go out of sport. That's kind of what we can expect for speeds and sport and performance. I guess we'll go into a couple of um, advanced functions, right? And the way you get into those is you move your stick up, this little joystick here, push it up. And there's our return to home. There's auto takeoff. Oh yeah, we can do auto takeoff. There's no button on here, but we can still do that if we go into this menu. You can auto land where it'll just land wherever you want. Um, let's try, let's try follow me. I think this should have GPS in the controller. So we'll try it real quick. We'll go up a little bit and we'll just click on follow me. Follow RC automatically. Make sure the field is open or short press the home button to exit. Okay. Let's see what it does. It doesn't have enough battery power to do these smart functions apparently. So I'm pressing home to get out of that mode it's trying to do. So it's saying low battery and it's 10.9 volts. So this is a 3S, so we should be good until nine maximum before we destroy the battery. So I guess what we'll do, maybe we'll, we don't wanna do a range test on low battery um, and it won't let us, it seems like it won't let us do any flight modes, special flight modes. So I guess we'll just kind of fly it around and then we'll do the part two flight review will be all those smart functions. And keeping in mind, checking out the lights. So the front's now blinking white and the rear is blinking red. So that seemed to kick on at maybe 10 volts. So let's do a return to home. If we go out here kind of far, not out of the park. And we'll just do a return to home now and see how close it comes back. Holding return to home down. Auto returning, there we go. So it should go up to 40 meters. There's a nice view of West Maui there as we're coming up. You can see in the video, we started to get a little bit of scratchiness and it really depends on how your antennas are, right? You always want your drone to be perpendicular to the flat area. So I had my controller kind of up like this and it was kind of getting scratchy. If you're gonna be flying like that and holding the controller like this, you should go like this. Now it's coming on back. You can see the speed looked like it was around eight miles per hour. And let's just see where it kind of wants to land again. Um, but I don't wanna really land yet. I wanna kind of exhaust this battery and see what happens in the force landing and stuff. Cool thing on the DVR, look at the bottom of the screen here. It's showing it's um, how long it's been recording in the clip. So it looks like it's making multiple clips just in case there's some corruption, which is actually really good. And you can always combine your clips in editing software. So this is interesting. Look where it's trying to land now. I think it might be coming back to the RC. Yeah, that's what happened. Remember when I went in follow me mode, I saw flash up on the screen, home point set to RC. So that's actually really good. And that's exactly where I was standing when we did that. So I'm gonna cancel out of this just by pressing home once. And look at that, I hear three beeps. And that's just the wind pushing it down now. But it did stop returning to home. So we'll just fly around until we really do um, exhaust this battery. I wanna see again, I'm gonna go into sport mode and I wanna see, this allows me to go into sport. I wanna see if it does kick that camera up. 
You know what I mean? Just so you don't see the propellers. Maybe not. Maybe it just did that one time. A little bit of horizon sway. Look at this. When I'm turning kind of hard, you see the horizon's getting a little crooked? And it looks like it slowly levels out. Oh. Okay, look at this. So I'm hearing beeping on the controller and it's coming down slowly. But, see how I can push it up and it's slowly rising? So if you are in emergency trying to get home, you can still fly at normal speed, but it wants to slowly come down. I really do like that, that's good. So it's really warning you. Lights are flashing even um, faster now. And there's actually green on the back indicating, uh, actually they're green and um, red. Green's on the right, red's on the left, sorry. Flashing a little faster. 10.7. Let's just see how long we can fly it. It should have a second low voltage landing that completely forces it. We'll just fly around slowly and see just really what kind of like slow footage maybe we can get. Where I'm just barely pushing the sticks. You know what I mean? If you wanted to get some cinematic. I didn't even take any pictures. We'll take pictures in the next one, guys. So, slow cinematics. Let's fly right next to this chair. There we go. And you see it's, it's landing on its own if I do let off the throttle, but if I give the throttle a little pressure up, still able to fly. Let's just see how long it'll fly for in this mode. I always like to do this stuff, so you guys know exactly what to expect when you're buying this drone. And so far, I am impressed for how it's flying at such a cheap cost. And the gimbal isn't half bad at all. Making sure everything is still recording, yes. Woo! See how that thing's flying nice and smooth? It does remind me of a mini version of the Femi 4K. Not the Femi 4K, the Mi 4K. Remember the bigger one? Still trying to land, but I can still push it up. That's great. Let's just keep on flying. Been a couple minutes. We won't be doing any damage at 10.5 volts to the battery, since it is a 3S. The gimbal is working great. Flying nice and steady. Still pushing up so it doesn't land. Just doing figure eights. So far, man, what a great competitor to the H501S. And you have video stabilization. And it's kind of like for those of you looking at this one, you may be looking at this because you don't like to have your own phone you have to put on or your own tablet. And maybe you don't like Wi-Fi connection. Maybe you like um, your video in 5.8 gigs, gigahertz, analog. That's what this one gives you. Cool thing is it's got a DVR built in. Pushing up, it's getting a little slower at going up but it's still able to do it. I'm just making circles. <laughs> All in the sake of the review, I'm gonna take this battery down as low as we can. Whoa, 9.6 volts. Oh, 9.2, okay, I'm gonna land it already. It's time to land. Whoa, already 8.6. Jeez. I'm not gonna touch it. Okay. Turning off ASAP. Holy smokes, let's turn off the... Okay, it landed, everything stopped recording, good. Gosh, it looks like the FC almost. Yeah, it powered itself off. Okay, that's what it did. It seemed like it would have stayed up in the air, but when it landed, that's actually a really good feature. When it landed, it powered itself down because it was getting below nine volts. Gosh, I better put this battery on the charger ASAP. Battery, not too bad, I can touch it. It's just a little warm, a little over warm, not hot at all, but that's good. If you do drop it that low, turn that thing off ASAP and charge your battery.
as soon as possible. Maybe cool, let it cool down for a few minutes. Um, but I think this battery should still be okay, I hope. <laughs> anyway, let's go sit down and do a pros and cons, guys. Motors are just barely warm. Okay, so what can we say about the Femi A3 on that first flight test? Don't forget, more videos on this coming up. So you guys, if you aren't subscribed already, please subscribe and watch out for those um, next few videos because we're gonna test all of the smart functions. It has a bunch of smart functions. And also, if you wanna see the unboxing, I already did an unboxing and I went over all of the menu in the controller. So I'll have that link pop up here. And in the description as well, I'll have the playlist for all the videos on this but the reason I say that is because we're gonna do the smart functions and we're gonna do this has a little um, do-it-yourself port where there's two actual servo plugs and you can plug a servo in here and you can uh, screw it on here or tape it on and you can use it for like drone fishing that's one another thing that's really cool about this so we're gonna test that also first things first super low noise very very quiet if you're looking for something that's quiet cheap seems to work very well uh, the range this is a very high interference area so the range was already uh, starting it looked like it tried to return home when I went behind me too far and I was facing that way um, out of the really control signal it already tried to return home it seems like everything works very well the control is very smooth yet precise there's no bottom sensors but you can't really expect money bottom sensors for this price point i mean between two and three hundred dollars this is going to be directly competing to something like uh the spark right so the spark or the hubson h h501 series i'll well, have also had the screen recording which is really cool that's a pro for me even though it does the 5.8 which is a pro or con for certain people um, it does record that and it's all built in you can record it if you want to you don't have to record it the design it looks like a little mini a me 4k drone what would be cool is if they can step this up in the uh, femi a3 second edition and give us like either a three axis or maybe 4k on a little camera like that that'll be a killer drone um, because i really do like it so far it flew very well very fast did you see how i was booking it in even sport mode going super fast just about eye level and it didn't come down into the ground like a lot of drones that don't have bottom sensors do One thing I should touch on that's sort of a con is to update this thing, it's not like one of those Wi-Fi DJI drones where you can update everything uh, straight from your Wi-Fi home connection. What you've gotta do is you've gotta load a file from Femi, you have to download it, and then you have to put it in the SD card and put the SD card in, boot this up, and it goes ahead and updates it that way. Same thing for the camera. You have to put it on this SD card, put it in, boot it up, and it will update the camera. Last thing for the flight controller, you can't do it from the SD card. You actually have to plug it into your computer, like a computer drive, and it's gonna show upgrade, and you have to put the uh, flight controller software in there, unplug it, and then power the drone up, and that's how it updates. So we'll also do some range testing with this one. Of course, I always do range tests in residential and also in the country just to see how far it can go and then we'll also do some uh, shoreline here since i'm in hawaii see what kind of cinematic uh, video we can get if you really wanted to try to use it for getting some nice cinematic video anyway guys i hope you enjoyed that again links down in the description as usual i'll have an awesome uh, coupon code that'll bring this thing way down under three hundred dollars so if you wanted to save some money uh, since i'm reviewing it i'll give you that deal so check that out anyways thanks for watching and i'll see see you in the future flight tests.